this week's Charlie's Cavalry Coaches Show. I'm John Moses, joined as always by Chargers head coach Pete Rossimondo. Coach, it's your team coming off a thrilling 59-38 victory for the battle for Elm City. Uh, how do you feel about your team right now? I feel pretty good. Uh, it was a heck of a victory on Friday night and uh, didn't start out looking like that at the end of the first half, but uh, we managed to put it together in the second half and really do some good things. I feel good about the guys. I mean, they're working really hard. They're, they're playing as hard as they possibly can, and, you know, good things are happening. Are there specific areas that keep you up at night right now, things that really concern you as you're getting into the hardest part of your schedule? Well, you know, like any, any I'm sure every, any coach at this point, you're just worried about, you know, the nicks and the bumps and the bruises that keep guys out of practice. And um, you got to practice to be good. So we got to get as many guys out there as we can. The day off this week definitely helped. You know, we gave them Saturday off and allowed them to enjoy the victory a little bit and I brought them back on Sunday for work. So. Oh, one thing we've talked about on the show is the trend of your team starting slow offensively. I mean, but you didn't have any problems against Southern Connecticut State with that issue because Mike DeCaro taking the opening touchdown back 91 yards. Talk about that momentum boost and what it meant to your team on Friday night. Oh, it's, I mean, it was, you know, tremendous. To score on the first play of the game is, is obviously going to give you a lift. It, it gave our offense a lift. It gave our defense a lift. It went right out there and stopped them in three plays. And then, you know, offensively, I thought we were going to put that first drive in the end zone and as we were getting close, and you know that would really be that would have really made me happy to start fast, not only on special teams but on offense. But you know we threw an interception and unfortunately stopped the drive, and then they went down and scored, and you know it sort of evened things off a little bit. Well, it was a, certainly a seesaw battle, but let's take a look at that opening highlight where Mike DeCaro brought it back for a touchdown, 91 yards, and pretty good execution along by your special teams group. Yeah, they did a great job of uh, you know the blocking. The blocking scheme was tremendous. You'll see a lot of guys that, uh, you know, are sticking on their blocks and making sure that they're, uh, you know, creating a hole for Mike to run through. And Mike just does a great job. You could, if you see on the highlight, he sets it up, you know, goes to the middle, and then, then comes back to the left side and, and hits the seam for a touchdown. That well, was a very nice play. And in the second quarter, uh, Southern held a significant advantage in time of possession. You know, how did that factor into some of your defensive struggles in the first half? I don't think our defense struggled um, in a sense that, I mean, we were physic we were out physical in Southern. Our kids were doing a great job. You know, they have a heck of a running back who made a lot of plays, not only running the ball, but catching the ball out of the backfield, which he hadn't really done all year. So those things, uh, you know, we struggled with a little bit. And, you know, really field position is what killed us in the first half. I mean, you know, we, we punted. They returned it, I think, 25 yards, the first one. The second one was about 35. So... We really struggled on, on that special team. There was a bit of a wild sequence in the second quarter where, you had, where the game had three turnovers in the span of about a minute and ten seconds. Can you take us back to that, that situation a little bit and what, and what you learned from your team there? Well, you know, we, 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 pr we preach and we're, we take pride in not turning the ball over. So to, in order, you know, to turn the ball over is really frustrating for me and the rest of the guys. And they knew at that time that we weren't playing a brand of football that we really want to play. And... You know, that's holding the football. It, you know, punting is not, you know, it's not a four-letter word and for us. We can punt. That's okay. But you don't want to turn it over. And it was frustrating in a sense because I, I didn't think the Jason Thompson turnover, the interception, was an interception. I thought it was simultaneous possession. And, you know, I thought we would have the ball at that point. It was a catch. And I don't know how the guy wrestled it away from him, but he did. One place, you know, down the stretch in that second quarter, you allowed Southern to score the final 10 points of the half. You know, and that last touchdown was a little bit concerning with the way your team could not cover a squibbed kickoff. You know, so what was the adjustment as you went into halftime? Well, the adjustment was don't touch the kickoff. He's not a returner, Camille, and, you know, we want that ball to go through to the returners and let those guys pick it up. They had an opportunity to do that. You know, Camille stopped the ball from going through and then didn't recover it. Um, so, you know, we just talked about making sure that we let it go through, and if it is short, jumping on it, not trying to pick it up. Um, and that was really the only adjustment we made for that. Um, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, <laughs> our uh, defense gave up that touchdown really was set up by that, by that, that play, and it was unfortunate. I think as the second half got on, it got to be really impressive with the way your defense played down the stretch, as well as your offense, scoring the 21 points unanswered to finish the game. You know, tell us a little bit how your, your team was able to close out that game and put it away pretty comfortably. Well, I, I think it's, it certainly started on the offensive side of the ball when we answered their score in the second half. You know, they scored. We took the ball down the field, 
right, right after a great kick return by Demetrius Washington Ellison, and, and we just went down and scored. And, and that was, I think, a big momentum lift to understand that, hey, we could score. And then our defense on the next drive, Rob Hill, you know, crushes the quarterback, you know, pops the ball up in the air, and Tom Hurts snares it out of the air and goes 48 yards for a touchdown. So, you know, at that point, you just knew the momentum was shifting. You know, we were down by two scores. Now, all of a sudden, we're up by a point. And then we scored again offensively. They wound up coming back and tying it on the Ryan Osheski fumble. But, uh, you know, we had it going offensively. We knew they were struggling to cover us, and Ryan was in a rhythm and felt really good. The offensive line was blocking. Yeah, one of those guys that had a big day was Jason Thompson. Seven catches, 179 yards, two touchdowns. You know, let's talk about the matchup that he saw against Southern Secondary. He's big, strong, and fast, and he just gave them all kinds of problems. Well, he's a matchup problem for anyone. He's six, you know, six foot four. He's 185 pounds, and he's the fastest kid on our team. So, I think, and he's got great hands, and he and he's a coachable guy that listens to what you're telling him, and all those things are making him the type of player that he is right now, which is. At this point, you know, he's really getting after people. So let's actually see that highlight clip where, uh, where Ryan Osheski throws a long touchdown to Jason Thompson. This made the game 17-10. to 10. So take, Break us down on this play. Well, we're running a bootleg throwback, and we had just changed quarters at that time, and I told Ryan at that point, you know, we're going to take an individual shot to Jason, and if it's open, you know, throw it. If it's not, throw it to the back of the end zone. If Jay can go up and get it, he will, and he does. That's just really an incredible throw by Ryan from the opposite hash mark. That has to be like a 50-yard throw. A lot of arm strength necessary to make yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Ryan, we know he has that. That's for sure. Well, despite Rashad slowly running for 184 yards, I felt like your defense actually did a good job against him in the second half. It, were you happy with their performance? Uh, I, was, I was happy with him. I think we could have done a better job of filling gaps. I mean, we allowed him to cut back. We knew that his big runs were cutback runs, and... And that's where he makes his money, and, and he did a great job with it. And he's a powerful runner, broke some tackles. But I think they did a good job in the second half. I mean, he had 75 yards on one run, you know, 184 yards on 23 carries. I mean, uh, 100 yards on 23 carries is not too bad, you know, for those guys, especially against – I consider him a really good back, probably the best in the league. Ryan Oshesky had himself a fantastic game, threw for 423 yards, three touchdowns. The two interceptions were both, you know, off a receiver's hands or wrestled away on the way down. You know, he's really come along in terms of efficiency this season. He's now the conference leader in efficiency, and he ranks in the top five nationally in Division Two. How does his efficiency really drive your team? Well, it drives our team because he's he's completing passes and he's moving the sticks on third down. I think those are, you know, that when you're asking a quarterback to do that and he's able to do it, that it helps your offense. It helps your team keep your defense off the field that you know it makes us you know an offense that's very difficult to defend. I think one of the unsung guys on your defense this year has been Mike Gomes. You know he's the team's sixth leading tackler but he came up with a with a pretty great highlight in this game you know something that he's gonna put on his highlight film for the rest of his life. Yeah Mike uh, not unsung to us I mean we know all about Mike Gomes and most of the people in our league know about Mike he's he's a tremendous competitor he plays with great passion and fire and he's got tremendous ability um, on top of that, you know, he can run, he can tackle, very intelligent, you know, he's over a 3.5 GPA kid, and um, he's one of our team leaders, so I'm really proud of him. So let's actually see that highlight clip. This is a, real, a pretty impressive play, an undersized guy, you know, he's supposed to take on a fullback on this play, but he actually avoids him. Well, Mike, he knows what's happening here. He's able to anticipate, get down low, and then just, you know, get under the runner, which is, you know, where Mike uh, obviously... Being his height can do that. Yeah, it's a great play. It's a great momentum change right there. I think that uh, Rashad know he was there after that. Yeah. Well, the front four of your defense, I felt like played another good game. I felt like Scott Schultz and Raheem Stanley's size in the middle gave Southern Connecticut some problems. You know, how did you feel about their performance against Southern? Good, solid. You know, I thought we did. We played pretty well. Our defensive ends played tremendous. Tom Hurd and Rob Hill were just, I mean, unblockable at times. Um, covered a lot of ground, pressured the passer, got Lynch to step up a bunch of times in the game. Um, Scott, you know, great having him back, and, and Raheem is tremendous. I met Bash, he did a great job in there. You know, it's a team effort in there, and can we do better? He rushed for 184 yards. We certainly could have done better, and I think we will, but uh, they played hard, and they played physical down the stretch, and they didn't get moved off the ball, which Southern does to a lot of people, so it was, that was a good thing to see. 
Well, in this final highlight clip, we actually see your defensive ends coming up and making a huge play with, Tom, with Rob Hill coming up and getting the sack, and the ball just falls right into Tom Hurd's hands, brings it back for a touchdown. Yeah, great play by Rob, just avoids the back's block, and, you know, big hit on a quarterback. Tom snares it out of the air and, you know, takes it the distance. It was, you know, huge momentum boost uh, change for us. And it was, a, you know, obviously a great play by both guys there. Yeah, that's, that's sort of rare where you get both defensive ends completely unblocked getting up the field like that because if Rob Hill had been blocked, Tom Hurd was going to get the sack. Yeah, yeah. It was going uh, to be a big hit no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> You're now into the toughest part of your conference schedule where you play Southern Connecticut State, then AIC and Bentley at home before you play at Merrimack. These are the four teams you expected to compete with you for the Northeast 10 Championship this year. So wh what do you think the next three weeks hold for you? You know, What are some of the challenges you're going to face? Oh, I mean, I'm, I, it's hard for me to tell what we're going to face over the next three weeks. I know what we're facing this week, and, and that's an AIC team that is probably 150% improved from the team we played last year. Great speed on defense, uh, a quarterback that is just a dual threat, can run and throw, um, and they, got, they just got personnel all over the field that are going to give us matchup problems. So, um, you know, beyond that, I haven't really looked at Bentley or Merrimack, but you know, they're having good years as well. I think Merrimack's still undefeated in the conference. And, That's right. Uh, they beat Bentley last week. And, you know, it's going to be a dog fight till the end. It always is in our conference. And, you know, we got to take it one game at a time. We struggle if we're going to look ahead, you know, to anything beyond AIC. Well, you know, you're, you're faced with a dual threat quarterback. You know, you've, you've faced a couple of teams this year that had dual threats. But I wouldn't say you've seen one as prolific as Kevin Arduino. Uh, the freshman. So how will you work to contain him? What's what's your game plan against him? You just got to tackle. I mean, when you get there, you got to tackle. He's going to make plays. I mean, he's a playmaker. There's nothing you can do about that. And just like slowly last week, you know, you're, you're never going to shut those guys down. But when you get there, you got to make sure he hits the ground and you got to make sure that, you know, we rally to the ball and make tackles. If we can do that, you know, we'll be, we'll have a shot at that game. We have to avoid the big play because he's made so many of them this year for that offense and you know they're good up front they have a very good offensive line so that helps them with the running game uh, and he he's a good enough passer to put the ball down the field to some very good athletes so uh, we just have to tackle him you know that's the most important thing well coach good luck this Saturday and we'll see you again next week for the Charlie's Cavalry Coaches Show thanks John for more, be sure to tune in to NewHavenChargers.com or for a completely student perspective, be sure to turn to charliescavalry.wordpress.com.